the refrain for infinite possibility or to entertain infinite possibility. From my perspective, it doesn't make sense. Personally, I don't know, nor can I logically or sensibly think of such possibility. The algorithms in my brain and my mind just cannot comprehend that. And I would love someone to tell me how that is possible. So the premise is wrong. And from my perspective, the outcome cannot be right. But then again, that's my perspective. I'm open. I don't know anything. I'm just sharing my perspective. So from my perspective, we really don't know and possibly can't know anything. But at our best, we can or we may only think we know. And what is thinking? From my perspective, it is something to think about. Thinking is something to think about. For without thinking, what do I know? Without thinking, what do you know? Without thinking, what do we all know? Without thinking, how do you know that you know? And without thinking, how do you know? Or how do we know that we don't know? And from my perspective, that is why these are called quests. Q-U-E-S-T-S. -E or questions. Meaning actively, or we are actively and intellectually searching or seeking and living for answers. And not only quests, they are not only quests, but an everlasting quest, an everlasting search. In another of my writings and presentations, some of you who may have read or listened to me, you have heard me mention that another definition, one of my other definitions of life is that life asks questions that provide answers that just ask more questions. So it's an everlasting quest in what I call a progressive or regressive. Just keep going forward or backward. You're just asking questions. But that's for another time. It is like, it's an everlasting search. It is like seeking that which some of us call truth. And this may come as a big surprise to some of you, but from my perspective, we cannot, I can never find it. Find it meaning find the truth. And that is one of the reasons why I sympathize dearly with those who are claiming to have found the truth. And are claiming to know the truth. It is interesting. The Desiderata. There's a line in Desiderata that. Recommend that we speak our truth. It is our angle of observation. Our right angle. Speak your truth quietly and clearly. And listen to others. Even the dull and ignorant. They too have their story. So everybody have a story. A truth. But the truth, from my perspective, no one knows. You may know of it, think about it, or I think it is. But to say we know the truth and we are speaking with a level of authority and arrogance as if we know this is this way or no other way, nobody else's angle is right, I think that's presumptuous. A, a former and late president of uh, the Czech Republic, whose name is Vaclav Havel, he once said, and I quote, he's one of my favorite quotes, by the way. He said, seek the company of those who seek the truth and run away from those who have found it, unquote. I stay far from people who know, say, claim to know the truth and have the truth and is speaking truth. Not just their truth, but truth. Everything else is, you know what. One of my personal definition, again, let me repeat this. One of my personal definition of life is that life is asking questions, as I mentioned earlier, that provide answers, that ask more questions 
in an infinite progression or an infinite regression. That's my personal, one of my personal definitions of life. But the beauty is that as long as we are asking questions and seeking more answers, it means that we are alive, we are aware. We are at least here above ground. For example, we ask questions such as what is awareness or what is consciousness? How and where did the thing we call awareness or consciousness began? How and where did our individual awareness or our individual consciousness began? Why did it begin? And when did it begin? And why did it begin? What happened prior to the beginning of awareness or consciousness? What was before everything? Can something come from nothing? What is thinking? Where is it from? What is the purpose of life? What am I becoming in this cyclic journey called life? And what am I supposed to become? What happened to our awareness, our consciousness at the end of this cyclic journey on this third dimensional plane in this period called life? In other words, what will happen to our awareness, our consciousness, our memories, our thoughts, our dreams, etc. at the end of this thing that we know on this side of reality called death? Do you know? Does any one of us really know? How do you know that you know? Or how do you know that you don't know? Please think before you answer. And are you sure? Again, from my perspective, no one knows for sure, at least not in this density. I think that there are infinite possibilities of what will, what may, or what could happen. But if we were at all humble, we would or we may admit that we do not know. And long before we came on the scene, it is alleged that a man that is considered to be a philosopher and no doubt one of the wisest, richest, and most powerful men to have walked uh, this planet Earth, or at the very least the wisest man, as I mentioned him before, in his time, said, we don't know. And I quote, no one knows what is going to happen next. That's why we are wanderers. No one can tell what will happen. Again, we are wanderers. No one can tell what will happen after we die. Unquote. Ecclesiastes 10 and 14 from the Good News Bible. I find that book to be one of the most interesting philosophical books. I recommend everyone read it. I've never heard any pastor preaching from it other than maybe quote a verse to back up some of their doctrine. But I recommend everyone read it, especially the good news. You know, just read it and see that this guy was a very practical man. And if he was truly the wisest man, live long before me, what I'm saying to you, nothing is new, then it worth reading. Anyhow, from my perspective, here on this plane, we are only programmed by our source to reason, to speculate, to imagine, to theorize, to hypothesize, to philosophize, to think that we know or to believe in any of the possibilities, the infinite possibilities, or to believe in none of the infinite possibilities. That is what we are programmed for, from my perspective. Now this is the end of part one of this presentation. So please join me for the continuation in video two hour of this presentation called The Mystic Philosopher's Perspective on the Cyclic Journey Called Life. I am the Mystic Philosopher. See you then.